Okay, I'm uh, working on my 2003 uh, Ford F-150. Going to be changing out my rotors, my brake pads, and some wheel bearings. Uh, need to take off. Need to get this caliper off. And these are uh, 13 millimeter bolts. what the 13 millimeter bolt looks like. I have the two caliper bolts off. I should be able to pull this caliper off and I'm out of the way. Gonna have to hang it. You want to be careful of this line, you don't want to kink it. Oh, brake pad just fell off. Just wrap that around a few times. Now I'm gonna slip it up through here. And I'm gonna slide that through. Come on. This thing's heavy. Okay, I'm just gonna hang it here. And I'm gonna slip this one through as well. Just for extra support. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, got my caliper hanging out of the way, making sure my brake line's not in any danger of getting kinked or messed up, and it should be good. Okay, next I'm going to take these two uh, 18 millimeter bolts off. This is this will hold the bracket on. That's what an 18 millimeter bolt looks like. Actually, before this, this brake pad already fell out, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out, this other pad out, and set these pads over here. I got both uh, 18 millimeter bolts off and now I have the uh, caliper bracket off. Okay, I'm going to get ready to remove this. I like to grab it with a big pair of uh, pliers, channel locks. Just grab it and just kind of work it. Try to hold your ruler. Try to break it free. And I think I just created a big enough gap to slip in a screwdriver. Oh, I got it behind it, so now just turn that. I'm just going to lay this out right here. Some couple, couple rags. 
just to lay down. Okay, first thing I gotta get off is this cotter, cotter key. Just gonna try bending that. You bend it and then you just slip it through here and you can usually pull it off sometimes. And bend it a little more. Okay, just gonna slip that through and pull this pull this cotter key out. May need to hammer it a little bit. Just lay that down on your paper towel. Next is a little uh, retainer key. I don't know what you call that, but lay that down. Uh, next, I have the, the spindle nut. Uh, that shouldn't be on very tight. I'm just going to grab it off with a couple pair of pliers. Grab it like so and give it a turn. It's not on very tight. Most wheel bearings aren't, or a lot of most wheel bearings and stuff are tightened by like inch pounds. They're not very tight. Let me set down the axle nut, I mean the spindle nut. And next thing to come off is this washer. Really, you could probably just pull this whole thing off right now. Matter of fact, that's what I'm going to do. These bearings, I mean, there's two bearings. There's an, an outer and an inner. But you just should be able to just grab the rotor. Kind of give it, it's already coming off. Okay. There's the uh, washer and the bearing. I'm going to pull this off. And, okay, that thing's heavy. Okay. I pulled my rotor off, and staring right at you is is a is a seal, dust seal, and then the inside is the actual bearing. I want to remove this seal. Now, they make special uh, seal pullers. It looks kind of like a half moon shape, and it kind of like hooked. You got to get underneath that seal and pull it out. But you don't really need a special tool for that. You can use like a I've used like a claw hammer or pry bar or a screwdriver and also I'm not going to be using any of these parts except for the uh, uh, the washer and the nut and uh, I'm, I'm, I got new rotors, new bearings, new seals and uh, so I'll show you how to get this seal off and what it looks like. I'll use a screwdriver and I'll pop this out. that's the dust seal I was telling you about it's a uh, just a little seal so this is the bearing on oh, the wheel bearing okay now one thing to notice when you buy new bearings they come with a race and you'll see them when I pull them out of the package there's a little our outer race uh, that the bearing taper bearing sits in it's tapered well I'll show I'll show it to you inside here um, this right here it's greased up right now but see this right here that's the that's the race that the uh, bearing sits in now sometimes when you buy new rotors they don't come with races already pre-installed uh, I will, I've only had that like one or two times where I had to actually change them out. All the ones I buy, they, they come with they come with the races already installed. But if you had to change out this race, you'd have to either use a, you have to smack this uh, race out, either use a press or figure out a way to get it out. And 
there's 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 all there's a race on this side for this big bearing and there's another race on the other side for the little bearing but when you buy new rotors they they uh, come with new races like right now this is a used race so if for some reason I was gonna reuse these and just change the bearings I'd have to replace this race here when I got new bearings or at least you should but anyway all right enough about that I'm gonna prep this spindle just gonna clean it off real quick give it a quick wipe down I got this wiped down it's not too bad I cleaned up I'm gonna set my old parts aside I don't need this don't need this don't need the seal I'm gonna get my new parts I'm gonna wipe a little grease on this uh, spindle be good just a little bit and I'm gonna use my bag just trying to keep this clean and a bunch of crap in there but as you can see that's that new shiny new race and like I said if you were changing out some stuff you'd have to uh, replace that but anyway it, I assure you most new rotors nowadays come with it already installed which is a good thing because they're kind of a pain in the ass to change out at least they can be I'm gonna take a little bit of grease Just a little bit. I'm going to dab it on this race here. Just the just the race. This nice dab will do you. Okay. I bought these bearings from AutoZone. I have a set 11, a set 12, and I already pre, I pre, uh, pre greased my bearings, so I got them ready to go. I don't, I don't like hanging out here, especially in a driveway like mine, where I got a bunch of crud and crap that could get into my stuff. So. I got all my stuff prepped, ready to go, hopefully. This here is a seal. I'm going to be installing the uh, outer bearing first. I'm sorry, the inner bearing. The larger one. Which is not this one. Okay. So I'll start with the 11. And like I said, I already pre-did mine. And as you can see, I don't know, I, I got, you want to make sure all your grooves have, uh, make sure your bearings have grease sticking out of them and whatnot. So, this, I don't need this race. This is the part that if you had to change that out, you drive this out and then you drive another one in but I don't need that so I'll just give it a quick once over oh, 
That should be good. You just set this bearing down in the race, work it in place, it fits good, like it should, that's perfect. Now the, the seal is ready now, here's the seal, the dust seal. Me, yeah, I like to coat coat the seal a little bit too. Just put a little bit of grease on that. Just a little bit. We could carry away. Now the seal should just fit like that. And typically, what I like to do is just give it a light tap. Some people use blocks of wood. It's uh, you can use a lot of stuff. It's your personal preference, but I, I like just to uh, give it light taps and you know don't go crazy on it. Just a small little hammer, just light little taps. Just nice little taps. You want to get you don't want to beat on it and it's better to have like a block of wood or something but just slight little taps you're not you're not smacking it you're not trying to bend it or anything just love taps really that's it easy as that the seals in and give it a wipe up should be ready to go in I'm going to go ahead and slip this rotor on. So I'm going to uh, stick the bearing in first. All right. So as you can see, I pushed the bearing in. I'm going to try to put it all in at one time. Get a socket. There it goes. Just got a little socket and pushed it on. Not really a normal way to do it, but for some reason that thing was giving me crap. Next to go on is so I'm going to clean off this washer. Here we got a washer. Okay. on okay. yeah, I just got that finger tight I have my inner seal my inner bearing and my outer bearing uh, I have my washer on and I just have this just just snug right now there is a procedure you got to follow to uh, preload the bearing, and it's actually here. I got the specs right here. Let me let me tell you what it says. Uh, it's actually a couple steps you got to do. Basically, while you're rotating the disc and the hub, you got to tighten this spindle nut to 30 foot pounds. That's the first step. Then you have it calls it says you loosen the spindle nut two turns. And then you tighten the spindle nut while rotating it again to 17 to 24 foot pounds. And then the last time you loosen it, it says 175 degrees. I'm just gonna go 180. And then your final torque 
uh, you go to 17 inch pounds, which is not very much. Inch pounds is very little. So I got a torque wrench. I'm going to do this to 30 foot pounds. I'm going to preload this bearing. Preload it to 30. You, wrote, you, you loosen it two turns. Then you uh, torque it back to uh, 17 to 24 foot pounds, somewhere in there. Then you, then you loosen it 108. 175. This has 175 degrees. So I'm just going to go 180, and then you torque it to your final torque to 17 inch pounds. Is what the spec calls for. So that's what I'm going to do. This nut here is a is a uh, I think it's a 26 millimeter or 27 millimeter. It's a uh, I got a 27 here, and yep, 27. Okay, let me set my torque wrench. Okay, got this one set to 30 foot pounds. I'm just going to hand tighten it. Now, as I'm spinning this, I want to torque this to 30 foot pounds. Rotate this and torque it to 30. Up, oh, that's 30. Okay. Now it says to loosen this thing. Uh, I think it was two full turns. Okay, so I'm going to start here. That's one, two. Now it says I gotta spin this and torque this to uh, between 17 and 24 foot pounds. Gotta set my Actually, I'm gonna go uh, 23, 23 foot pounds. As I'm, as you spin this, you want to torque it. In this okay that's torqued to uh, torqued it to 23 foot pounds now for the final torque it says loosen this nut 175 degrees so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start I'm gonna go 175 degrees so I'm gonna start here About here and just go to about here that's about 175 give or take okay now now I got to torque this to 17 inch pounds which is really a uh, 17 inch pounds is about about one and a half foot pounds that's nothing Really, I don't have one that goes that low. So uh, let me see how low does this one go? 12, 12 inch pounds is one foot pound. So uh, you know, 17 is about you know not less than one and a half. Eighteen would be one and a half. So I mean, let me see how low this goes. This, oh, this goes to five. So let me let me count down from five. Five, four, three, two, one. I got it set for one and a half foot pounds. <laughs> That's the lowest thing I've ever torqued anything to. Let's see. One and a half foot pounds. You spin this while you do it. I 
that's all it takes. And that's nothing. I want to make sure I can't pull that off with my finger. Nope. Okay, so that's how you do it. Now I'm going to put this on. Use the cotter. I'm blocking the hole. Use the cotter can. I'm actually reusing the same one. You really shouldn't do that, but uh, I am. It's not a good idea. It's better to, to go replace this thing. Now, I'm going to fold this over. Let me just all right. Everything's all good. I just got to put the dust cap on, and the, this is done. Where's my dust cap at? Yeah, just because. I'm going to put a little more grease right here, just kind of, just in case. If they get hot, it'll suck some in a little bit. All right, let's put that on there. had to bend the side out a little bit so it'll fit. Okay. Clean off this rotor a little bit. Okay, I gotta put this uh, bracket back on. Before I put this bracket on, I'm gonna inspect these uh, slide bolts. Just, you pull that boot out and oh yeah, they still look really good. Really good. So I'm just gonna pop that back on. Hopefully you guys can see what I just did. I'm going to inspect the bottom one. Just look at that boot. Look for cracks or messed up. You know, you're inspecting it. Pull it off. That one still slides real nice. Looks good. Okay. Alright, looks good. So, I'm going to put that back on. Now also, these bolts, a lot of people, they like to use a, like a thread locker on this, but I don't. I just torque it to spec. But some people put like uh, that stuff on the bolt that makes it hold it. But I don't, I don't do that. But you can if you want to. It's personal preference. Oh yeah, caliper brackets, 136 foot pounds. That's all it called for was torquing it. It didn't specify any kind of thread locker. But like I said, personal preference. Okay, this is a 100 and what did I say 136? Yeah, 136 foot pounds. That's 136. Okay.
that's 136. I'm gonna clean up my slide points and I like to use a little sandpaper and a little anti-seize. Sometimes you can pull these off. Actually, these do come off. Let me clean these up. Sometimes you get new ones, but I didn't. I got the cheap brakes. So I didn't get new stuff. So I just took off these contact points. I'm just gonna clean them up a little bit. Actually, let me make sure I don't have any contact points. Let's see here. Nope. Just as I suspected. Cheap stuff. Oh, well, uh, all right. Let me keep uh, clean these up real good. See how nasty they are. Anyway, put these back on. Actually, let me uh, let me lube these up. I got some anti seize, and if some people like to use anti seize, some people don't. I like anti seize when it comes to lube and brakes. Some people like to use like caliper lube or some other high temp grease. But this is perfectly fine. It says so on here uh, uses. Uh, that's Spanish. I don't read Spanish. Here we go. It says on exhaust manifolds, head bolts, EGR valves, turbo bolts, intake manifolds, spark plug threads, brake assemblies. So it's rated for this. Don't let anybody tell you different. Anyway. Like I said, I like this stuff. Just gonna put a little bit on here. I like to pile it on pretty good. That's your slide points. And that ought to be good. You don't want to get too much on. You don't want to get it on your rotor, but that'll be enough. I tell you, about the two messiest things is uh, brake grease and, I mean, wheel bearing grease and anti seize. It's messy crap. I don't like working with either one of them. There we go. Should be good to go. I just gotta do this one, upper one. Ready to slip my brakes in, brake pads. I put a little on the back. Take this one out and move it up a little bit. This one's kind of playing hard to get out. Put a little lube on this. Be good. I'm ready to throw on my caliper. Okay, pull that out. And Yep. Now, 
these uh, you want to inspect the uh, caliper pistons. Let me grab an old brake pad and, and uh, do both of these at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna watch out for that brake line and drive these bastards home. That ought to be good. Okay, yeah, this freaking brake is heavy. All right, now I know it'll fit now. Okay, now I'm gonna slip those on. Push the, when you're pushing these on, you gotta push these in. Make sure they line up. And twist them a little bit. Okay, and they're in. Just gotta put the bolts on now. Okay, got that one started. Just snug these up. Okay, let me see the the caliper slide bolts are 21 to 26 foot pounds. So 22 foot pounds. Two. All right, look this over. I do believe this side is done. <laughs>